Hi everyone. In this quick video, I just want to review the nursing process and how the RN role differs from the PN role. And we'll talk more about this in class throughout the semester and pretty much the entire year. The nursing process is a five-step process that includes assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation. And really the critical question we have to ask is, how is the RN role different than the PN role in the nursing process? Remember in the PN role, the practical nurse assists with the collection of objective and subjective data and reports it to the RN. The PN assists with the creation of a nursing diagnosis. The PN assists with the planning of the, ca the care, so uh, assists with the creation of the plan of care. Um, the PN implements the portions of the care plan that are within their scope of practice, and the PN participates in evaluation through those observations that are within their scope of practice and reports back to the RN. You now, as the RN, are going to be um, collecting the objective and subjective data, synthesizing that information to create your diagnosis, creating a plan of care based on the priority diagnoses, writing the measurable goals and outcomes, implementing that plan, including delegating down and up, and then evaluating whether or not your plan worked. So your role is much greater, as well as your responsibility. The first step in the nursing plan is assessing. So you're going to investigate and you're going to collect subjective and objective data that includes physical information, psychosocial information, and spiritual information based on the needs of your specific patient. Simply going to a care planning book and looking up the information is not enough. You need to actually talk to and examine your patient to make sure that the information that you're putting into the plan of care is specific to the needs and the desires of the patient, both physically, psychosocially, spiritually, and then culturally as well. In the diagnosing step, then you're going to analyze the data to determine the best plan of care or what the priority nursing diagnoses are. And this requires you to prioritize all of the potential and actual nursing diagnoses, to apply critical thinking, which requires experience, and to identify relevant data and to kind of uh, remove or ignore or set aside irrelevant data. Um, if you have a patient who is uh, slightly tachycardic and has an irregular heart rate, but that's their baseline, then you wouldn't want to work that into your plan of care to normalize that because that is normal for that patient. Planning. So when you create your care plan for your patient, what you want to develop are um, what we call SMART goals and SMART outcomes. And this means that they're very specific. So somebody could pick them up who doesn't know the patient and read them and understand what you mean. They're measurable, which means that they're not arbitrary. So you can't say something like the patient will feel better. You have to say something like the patient will report a pain scale of three or less on a scale of one to 10. Um, they have to be achievable. So if the patient is admitted to the hospital for severe chronic pain due to metastatic cancer um, and you know their pain scale has never been below a seven, writing the patient will be pain free is probably not achievable. If you have a patient who has not been ambulatory in three years, writing the patient will ambulate 50 feet in the hallway three times a day is probably not achievable. So make sure that the goal is achievable. Um, and if you have a patient who smokes and is not interested in quitting smoking, writing the patient will participate in smoking cessation is also not achievable. So the patient has to be agreeable as well as the goal has to be achievable. They have to be realistic. Um, so, you know, don't put down there that the little old lady who, it ha you know, takes sips of water once an hour is going to drink four um, liters of water today. That's not realistic. 
Um, so just think about, um, you know, is that something you can actually accomplish in a day um, or in the time frame that you're looking at? Okay, and then they're timely, so you need to assign a time to them so that you know when that goal needs to be reassessed. Um, if you leave things open-ended, then you don't know how fast you're working towards achieving that goal, and it makes it very hard to measure it. Um, for example, uh, the patient will walk 25 feet, but you don't say how often and you don't say by when. Um, and then that just becomes an open goal that doesn't have an expiration date. And so is that just before the patient themselves expires or before they're discharged? Um, so it needs to have, you know, the patient will walk 25 feet, you know, to and from breakfast, 25 feet to and from lunch, 25 feet to and from dinner, something like that. So, you know, total of um, 150 feet once a day. Uh, and then make sure that they're, again, specific to the patient. This is probably the most critical piece. You want to make sure that everything that you're writing down can be applied uh, to your patient. When you implement your plan, basically you're just putting your interventions into practice. Make sure that you're delegating correctly and assigning the tasks to people who not only know how to do them, but they have time to do them. One of the critical things about delegating as the RN is that you are um, utilizing your team to their full potential. So if your LPN is um, maybe passing a couple meds and maybe doing a couple treatments and your LNA um, is taking care of every patient on the unit today because the other LNA called out sick, and you, somebody rings their light and needs to go to the bathroom, asking your LNA to go toilet that person is probably not the best use of all of your resources. So either you should go toilet that person or you should do an assessment while you're doing one of the treatments that the LPN was going to do and ask the LPN to toilet that person and do a quick whatever while they're in there that also makes the best use of their time. Um, so uh, what we refer to as kind of crew resource management or, you know, really good use of uh, your team is, is a very critical skill to develop when you are thinking about delegation and implementing your plan. Then you're going to evaluate. So at the end of your shift, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, um, depending on what time frame you gave your goals, you're going to look back and say, did the nursing interventions accomplish the stated goals and outcomes as written? So put on your thinking caps and decide, should I mark these interventions as one completed, which would mean that, um, you know, check, the goal was met. Um, two would be, should they be continued? So they're working, but the goal has not been completely met, or um, you know the, the patient is uh, demonstrating progress with that goal, but it's not ready to be modified because they're not ready to progress yet. Should the goal be modified either upward or downward based on the patient's ability? So if I had set a goal that my patient was gonna walk 100 feet in the hallway twice during my shift, and during the first time the patient became fairly short of breath and during the second time the patient made it about 25 feet and had to sit down, then my goal needs to be modified that maybe the patient will walk 50 feet at least once per shift. Or does the goal need to be stopped? So what if I was walking my patient and suddenly their oxygen saturation dropped down into the 70s and they became profoundly bradycardic and hypotensive and had a syncopal episode, I probably would want to discontinue that goal into the, until they had had further workup and it was safe to resume it. So I might stop that goal. So anytime you have a goal that either appears to not be working at all or appears to be um, counterproductive, so dangerous or unsafe, um, or achieving a different goal than what you set out to accomplish, you should stop that um, goal or that intervention and uh, choose something else. So if you have questions, go ahead and um, ask them in the OneNote forum, um, in the collaboration forum 
on OneNote and you can ask it in 2010 or in 2030. It's up to you, but I will see you in class on Monday morning and we can certainly chat about it then as well. Thanks.